Hi everyone, it's Cal here to talk to you about the Kundalini. I had some questions that I wanted to address in this video um, about how I did the Kundalini in a year and a half and the obstacles that I faced. Um, yes, I did the Kundalini after starting meditation. It was a year and a half. Uh, however, the soil, I had been building the soil to do the Kundalini for a long time. And that is, uh, I've, I was very fit, um, uh, good nutrition. Uh, I had a lot of stress in my life. I was super determinated. Um, I was truth seeking and risk taking. So all those combined are a fertile soil for doing the Kundalini and everybody has those things in their everyday life and everybody can obviously do the Kundalini. Um, the biggest obstacle that I faced was taming the mind. Uh, when I tamed my mind and cut myself off from the world, which I think is very important to do. You have to have a lot of self time. Um, when I cut myself off from the world and calm the mind, then I was feeling more trust with my center and I was able to move forward with uh, more conviction and more fluidly. When I uh, got into comparing myself to the rest of the world or seeing what the rest of the world is doing, uh, the mind started to take over with its self-doubt and its crazy inner talk. So you really have to tame the mind and you really have to be on your own quest, be on your own internal quest where you're talking to your inner self and you're saying, okay, where are you taking me today? And trust what comes forward. You will think you're crazy. There's no doubt about it. You will think you're crazy. Uh, because we've been taught that the outside world is so important, but truly it is the inside world that is of utmost important because that's where it all begins. Um, so another obstacle that I faced, I was a single mom and I was organizing my daughter because I was meditating so much up to 14 hours a day. And so I had her in uh, all sorts of programs and it was a lot of organization but I did it. And, um, also I was taking grand leaps of faith, which I have done in the past. Um, I'm a big leap of faith person. Um, and I had to weigh out the leap when you have a child, you obviously have to weigh out your leap of faith to, um, uh, minimize, uh, uh, the possibility of negative outcomes. So trying to um, uh, take, take a leap of faith and, uh, and minimize risk was kind of like a full-time job. Um, and it continued on after the Kundalini as well. Uh, but when you take that leap of faith and when you follow those instincts inside, you get rewarded. And it's not, um, it's not sometimes a reward you can see right away. Uh, and I, in the beginning I was, I, I had read all this esoteric material and I was like, well, I'm, I'm going for the gold. I'm definitely, um, going for the reward. If it's in meditation, then so be it. I didn't even know about the Kundalini when I was doing all this meditation. It wasn't till years after the Kundalini that I had realized what I had done. Um, it, just because I have absolutely no, uh, religious background. I was actually brought up atheist, um, out in the middle of nowhere, uh, in the forest on a farm. So it's also living minute to minute with your inner guide. And that's really key. Um, living minute to minute with your inner guide as you meditate, as you uh, follow your instincts just in everyday life and recognize that you're following your instincts, the energy moves to compile more and more. 
Um, does that make sense? So as you drop uh, a drop of water into a cup, um, it begins to build the more water you drop into that cup. And just think of that, those drops of water as being trust. The more you trust your inner self and the steps you take, and the more you shut down that linear logical mind, um, the more you step out into the truth of what, re not, not what reality is, but what reality can be. And it becomes a very exciting game. And the risk in it is super allure alluring. I mean, this is the truth of living. This isn't, you know, drug addiction or um, any kind of uh, negative addiction. It is kind of the addiction to God in a way. Uh, trusting that which you cannot see to support you and believing it so much. So shutting down that logical mind and going into believing um, was a challenge in the beginning every day. I mean, truly, uh, after I had done the Kundalini, I mean, I was living in Mexico at the time I'd left everything my fantastic job the works to go and do this and on almost next to nothing no funds like no safety net no nowhere to land after um and if you have children I don't know I, I'm not recommending anything to you I'm just saying this is what I did and as you trust the next step comes and truly I did think I was going mad so very often because reality, this, this sort of shared reality that we're all in starts to fade away and you become so connected to your center and this new reality that's being created for you. It's very it's super exciting. Um, sadly, there's no one you can share it with, you know, and the more you share, the more crazier you sound. Um, the more you just live in harmony with your inner being and let them guide you and you have conversation with them, um, the more you open your cell, your eyes up widely to the absolute radiance of life and you know life becomes so exciting you know whether or not you ever do the kundalini life becomes just so good um after the kundalini after being on the sort of other side of the fence um i did have a fall i had um uh, it's kind of like a mental breakdown where I just couldn't take the living in two worlds and I had to choose. So um, that's when I stopped uh, the meditation. Um, and now I'm beginning it again, <laughs> but in a more measured way. I was very um, driven and very, um, very assertive with meditation. So the obstacles are, yeah, you're, you are going to think that, um, you're losing your mind. There's absolutely no doubt about it. I mean, if you're not thinking that there's something wrong, um, because the world becomes also consuming before I had done the Kundalini, I had been doing this, uh, astral travel and it wasn't astral travel on the globe. It was travel out into the cosmos. And I was looking at um, how radiant, I mean, the cosmos is radiant. Where we're headed is absolutely radiant. It's incredible. The beauty is just absolutely staggering. Uh, it's, it's, the beauty is so unbelievable. Um, so also I wanted to mention that the lack of money, if you have lack of money to go and, uh, you know, go meditate out in the desert like I did or go stay in some place um, 
far away or take time off to do that. Somehow, um, the opportunity will be provided for you. You don't, don't worry. Don't use money as an excuse not to refine and advance your practice to get to the Kundalini. I will tell you almost all the time. I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about this, uh, but almost all the time, the lack of money is generally good because then you have to a really know what you want and then b you have to uh just allow it to come to you and it will it will when you magnify your intention through your focus and visualization it will come to you and sometimes even when you're on the path like me not doing any visualization but just being on the path the opportunity will be provided was i guided every step of the way um Someone asked me, yes, and so are you. We're guided all the time, 24-7. There's no way out of being guided. Um, and you know you're not being guided, or sorry, you know you're having resistance to being guided when you um, uh, feel, how do I say this? When you feel frustrated um, because your mind wants to know all the answers and wants to have all the answers. And the truth is that when you allow it to come to you, it's so much better than your mind could have figured it out. It's just so much better. Um, the mind is a child with a lot of power. And the more we get away from allowing it to take over and assuming that we need to be logical about these things, then the more we get into playing with energy and the energy is here to serve us. No doubt about it. Um, so those are the questions. Um, any other obstacles I can think of, uh, not really, because when you get deep into meditation, trust just comes naturally because you are humming in such a blissful state that all things you want are coming to you. You know, I just wanted truth, but here I was getting all these, you know, beautiful things being sent to me all the time, you know, lovely dinners, lovely home to live in, uh, all things that I desired were showing up at my door and I was going, hmm, you know, this is an absolute truth. I mean, yes, it's really pretty. But when you just allow and let uh, the ship take you, then it is truly a beautiful ride. Um, when you get deeper into meditation, or maybe you already are, you will, you will, the faith just naturally increases and you get to the point where it doesn't even matter what you were searching for or what you want doesn't matter just because things are coming to you and it is so good. It's just so lovely. Everything is so lovely. So those were the few questions that were asked and I um, just wanted to jump on because I know that you know, all these questions are so such good questions and there are people out there that can hopefully benefit from uh, knowing these things. So yes, it, I did the Kundalini in a year and a half and that's just when I first started meditation. I did meditation three times a day uh, for 10 minutes a day at each time and then I increased it up to two times for um, I think 15 minutes and then 20 minutes each and then boom after that I was off and sailing I went into just a 40 minute practice then I went into a one hour practice and then after my one hour one hour practice was so solidified I just kept building it and it really took no effort at all there is one thing that I want to warn you about when you ask for truth when you ask for absolute truth the energy knows where you have to go to get it. So the energy is going to give you 
something that drops you down to your knees and this is a memory it's and and the force knows where to go within you because the force is both within you and outside of you it knows where to go to get that that little piece of whatever it is that's going to bring you to your knees so i just want you to be prepared for that and i think i'll do another video on that as well because that is uh vital and it is good to be prepared um it's not just the kundalini it's after the kundalini as well that you can go to uh greater and greater heights in meditation it doesn't stop there um it's uh but that's a video unto itself so i hope you got something from this video and stay with your practice and um trust and have faith i know that's easy to say you know words words seem so cheap but the more you actually take the action the more you get the feeling and it's the feeling it's the feeling of trust that comes forward okay it's it's not coming from here it's the feeling so calming the mind um doing good things for yourself every day and building your meditation practice all key. Uh, they all work together. Um, they're all, they all help uh, you integrate your forces and build that stream that's going to help you anchor below and uh, connect above. So again, I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great day wherever you are and um, take care and I'll, I'll see you next time.